Welcome everybody, Nanka here, and it's time for another episode of Sold in Shorts. Welcome everybody to a, uh, I'll be honest, I don't actually know what this is. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a Sold in Shorts style because it's me on my own, and it's going to be short, and I'm going to start it. Uh, basically, I uh, happened to stumble upon um, a copy of Dead or Alive 3 for the original Xbox uh, in my nearest CEX, which is still a ways bit to travel to because, you know, in a village, obviously, you don't get a CX in a village. So let's begin! And I'm playing... Ooh. Interesting shot there! <laughs> also, like... Hey, how should we program our game? I know, Jang Li? Yeah, always the most like, thrilling of characters. He told me it was the big box art sort of character sort of, uh, you know, being promoted at the time. I know she was like on the extreme, uh, Dead or Alive extreme cover as a result. Ah, yeah, this yeah. is the first game to introduce Christy. Uh, you know, Dead or Alive games typically only introduce, you know, two to four characters per entry sort of thing um, and this game's was uh, Christy uh, I think Brad Wong and Hitomi there we go Brad interestingly uh, way of uh, depicting him given that uh, in most of the sort of later games he's mostly just comical drunken hey Hitomi uh, yeah she's my main and uh, she'll be who I'll be playing as uh, through this uh, session primarily I think I may have a little bit of practice first that is a very interesting intro, on the basis that it doesn't have the actual main character in it! Where was Kazumi?! What's going on? Why was there no Kazumi in the opening?! That makes no sense! She's your actual main character! I mean, to be fair, there's been a strange thing where they seem to have a habit of pushing Kazumi aside, like guest appearances in other games, for instance, usually like, Kazumi's pushed aside in favour of, like, Ayane, and nowadays in favour of, like, Marie Rose and Hanoka sort of thing. Uh, Kazumi gets neglected a lot as a protagonist for some reason, and I'm not sure why, and this game is surprisingly beautiful for, you know, Gen sort of 6 original Xbox sort of game. I'm, I mean, of course, it's probably got a bit of a boost because it's running my Xbox Series X here. But, uh, wow, it's um, really, really good. If you, if I wasn't seeing the you know, giant Dead or Alive 3 at the bottom, I'd have thought this was like Dead or Alive 4 at least playing. Yeah, so I guess Leon was around for two games. Because like after this, he was like only like uh, guest appearance, you know, basically the guest, you know, non-canon appearances. Huh, weird, the control stick just doesn't work at all in these menus. I All the costumes from the get-go? I do from the looks of it. Yeah, random it is. Yeah, this is just a little bit of practice round. Oh, yeah, wow, wow, we're up quick. Yeah, there we go, now it's working. Okay, yep, defend. Hopefully you can hear that all right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, counter. No. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, cuz I'm oh, well. Not sure what that was, but Brief for smooth over uh, fit. Well, the only you know the buns are working nicely. The only thing I will say is that running is very difficult in this uh, game. Completely forgot about tag battles. It wasn't in the last one. Um, well, I need to practice with Hitomi, so. Wow! Oh, wow. Oh, 
Come on, I'm just. I'm gonna grab you. Now then. Oh, I was hoping to get it repeated. He was like, uh, trying to contradict me. He was like, Congratulations! It was, um, bizarre to say the least. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I should be ready to try to do the uh, arcade mode. Oh, hey, even says the body sizes for the male characters. I must admit, I've never been able to quite grasp the concept of the uh, uh, body sizes. Do they have an arcade intro for this one? No, just straight into it. Okay, let's, uh, whoa. What about to say, am I going to remember everything that's, uh, oh, thankfully. Oh, yeah, well, eventually he'd uh, start to, you know, expect things. Makes sense. <laughs> Was there only uh, one round per um, thing? Oh, yeah, it's only uh, one round in the arcade mode, huh? Strange, I left it on like, the default tooth thing, but I guess that doesn't change. Also, no... Oh, wait, it's booster. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, man, this was such an annoying one in the... Uh, Oh gosh, he got me good there. Oh. Again? Again? Oh really? Oh man, already! Oh man, that's terrible! He flanned me! Yeah, I should have expected that. Oh, this is going to do a lot of damage. Oh, no. Surprisingly little. Oh, no, I intended, but... Okay, I'll take it. Hey, that's strange. I'm pretty sure I put to English for the language as well. Did you not have English as a language for it? No, no. Yeah, thank gosh, I was not wanting to lose against Jan Lee. Gosh, he's annoying to fight. The hardest character I find to fight tends to be Rig. Well, who's luckily not in this game, but Jan Lee's annoying simply because the Hoo! repeatedly. That I'm not a big fan of his character in general. Funny that they don't have an interaction, given they basically become best buds. Oh, I thought I did more damage, but no, it's more of a um, stun blow to follow up sort of thing. Ah, this is going by much quicker than I was expecting. Oh, should probably not start every one of my fights the same way. Oh, man. Huh, thought I was going to have trouble there, but no, her, uh, the one or two attacks we did hit me with weren't that strong, so... This is normal difficulty? I mean, admittedly, I've played the other Dead or Alive games quite a bit. Oh, I was not expecting him to follow it up so much. Oh, gosh. Darn. He hits hard. I heard that in general, apparently the original Dead or Alive games, 1, uh, one through 4, uh, no, what 4 in particular, uh, aren't exactly particularly well balanced. Uh, the Kraya was often was like, um, uh, the sort of like thought process of, oh, the ninja should be like the strongest sort of character sort of thing. Oh, how did he interrupt me from there? There we go. Knocked him away. Oh, done. Yeah, finally, go on with a grab. Woo! Well, the arcade mode's shorter than I expected, given I'm already found the final boss. Ready? Who, my memories of him from, oh gosh.
My memories are from. Okay, I cannot grab him. Wow, this is a uh, different. So I noticed. Wow. Yeah, my memories of him from D Dimensions was that I uh, wasn't a big fan of him anyway. So, uh, not glad to see this guy again. Ah, oh, darn. A real interesting sort of way to do the fight, but gosh darn that's annoying. Darn. This is going to take a fair few goes. Oh, I thought I was close to him. So I don't remember his name being Omega. Oh, so he just spanned there at that time. Oh, so it's really hard to tell. Where my distance when it's angled like this. Man, this is a cheap boss fight, gotta say. I mean, yeah, you get the cool visual effect at first, but then as you sort of like, um, sort of like go ahead with it sort of thing. Oh, come on! Oh, I was so close! You saw that! Apparently can't block that either. Yeah, I did it! And now he tell me his ending, which is actually, you know, serious ending sort of thing, because like in Dead or Alive 4, it's just, you know, her cooking in, uh, and a naked shirt situation. Which is in, you know, she's wearing just a shirt. Which is funny and cute, but... Given, the, you know, the more serious implications are here of, you know, what she's doing, you know, I feel it makes better sense here. I mean, Dead or Alive 4's story for Hitomi is kind of, to a degree, a repeat of what she's doing in Dead or Alive 3, where she's just trying to track down um, Ayn, a.k.a. Hayate, to take over the dojo. Where really the point here is that she's more than capable of taking over the dojo herself, which is what this ending is representative of. Dead Alive Dimensions is the uh, best DOA game, but so I was kind of familiar of the boss concept, and gosh, I wasn't a fan of uh, I can't a really name. annoying boss in DOA Dimensions because he's just got too many sort of like mechanics, like the Tengu, for instance. You know, when it's you know unfair, starts spamming from distance, it takes ages for it to fire off. But in uh, interesting, so that was DOA Three. It feels really nice. It's a bit stiffer, like movement in particular. They really don't like the concept of you trying to run, but um. Gameplay-wise, it's really smooth, and graphically, it's really impressive. Uh, it's really impressive just, you know, how uh, good this game looks. Final boss fight was annoying, but cool sort of effect initially, but it, the problem with, you know, doing it like that is that it then completely distorts your uh, distance, as you could saw. My depth perception was not working there. Like, that boss fight would have been, ironically, manageable, I mean, annoying still, but manageable if it was actually on a regular 3D plane sort of thing. Also, because it would have opened up sidestepping to get out of the way of the projectile effect attacks, making him much more feasible as a boss fight. Yeah, fight. Uh, that was me playing Dead or Alive 3 in this whatever this is. I'm, you know, I'm just going to tell it's on short start. I just wanted to show off the Xbox Series X backwards compatibility, and yeah, I've got Dead or Alive 3 to play. I've been wanting to... Uh, go back and explore the history of the Dead Alive games because um, I do enjoy them. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and cheerio!